In 2016, I was a data analyst. Everyone wants to become a data analyst. In 2019, everyone wants to become a data scientist. In 2020, data engineering was hot. In 2021, machine learning engineering took off. In 2022 and upcoming 23, it will be full stack data science. Recently, everyone has been talking about ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, and DALI 2. Together with the advent of powerful machine learning Python libraries and end-to-end -end data science platforms, data scientist roles are becoming more and more high level and stretching across different parts of a data science pipeline. I think data science roles are becoming more full stack, especially now with economic downturn and companies are wanting to cut costs. More and more companies are wanting someone who can do it all, basically to implement a project from start to finish. So in today's video, we talk about what full stack data science is, what are the required skills for an end-to-end -end project, and how to learn these skills in 2023 with a clear roadmap that we'll cover later in this video. This video is sponsored by JetBrains Data Law, a collaborative data science platform for teams. More on them later. So what is full stack data science? A full stack data scientist is someone who has a reasonable amount of skill and experience in all of the steps in a data science pipeline, from idealization, data collection and engineering, model development and deployment, to generating business insights and data storytelling. The full stack term was originally used for software developers who can do both front-end and back-end work. They can design the UI and make the app work on the front-end and also work on the gritty back-end architecture and algorithms. In data science, it's slightly different, so I think it should actually be called full pipe rather than full stack. Being full stack doesn't mean that you have to do everything alone by yourself. It just means that you have the flexibility to take on different roles and contribute to different projects in many different ways. This diverse skill set is very valuable valuable for companies because you can understand the bigger picture and contribute to many different projects. You may be a data engineer in one project while analyzing data and building models in the other. You can also take on different roles in the same project because the real-world application of a machine learning model can be quite complicated and involves many different skills. For example, this is a model life cycle within a bank. To guide you through this jungle that we call full-stack data science, I'm going to break this down into eight main groups of skills. Firstly, math, probability, and statistics. Secondly, coding skills that can be Python, SQL, R, and JavaScript. We also have databases and data engineering, machine learning and deep learning that includes computer vision and NLP, computer science fundamentals, including software development and web development skills, cloud platforms, deployment and API, and other skills such as business knowledge and communication skills. It's worth noting that what sets full stack data scientist apart is the software engineering and data engineering skills because this is where your job can become more impactful in most businesses. You can build the database and actual applications to demonstrate the concept and deploy them in the real world. This is what's sorely lacking in many companies who are trying to figure out what to do with the data. I think before we learn anything, it's important to understand how the skills are actually being used in a real world use case. I don't know about you, but for me, it's very hard to learn something without knowing what's the purpose for it. Perhaps except for learning art, which I think is a point in and of itself. There are many data science and machine learning applications across industries, some of which we might already take for granted nowadays, such as our social media recommendation feed. But let's take a somewhat high stake use case, such as the customer rating system in a financial institution to classify the high risk and low risk customers. This use case and many other use cases you encounter in businesses all have the similar fundamental process. First, you need to define the business problem. And for this, we definitely need some business and domain knowledge for a customer rating system. The business problem could be that the financial institution, for example, a bank, cannot manually evaluate the risk of every customer because it can be extremely expensive and inefficient. So they need to somehow automate this process with machine learning to be able to be more efficient and cut costs. So 
your job is to identify the problem, do a cost-benefit analysis on different solutions. For example, you might consider 100% manual as it is now versus 100% automated system or a hybrid system where human analysis still can manually check some of the suspicious cases that are flagged by the machine learning model. With some domain knowledge, you might also have some expectation of which customer characteristics are more important for risk classification and in which cases this automated system might fail. The second step is to collect the necessary data from different databases, maybe from transaction database or from customer demographic database. If certain information is unavailable, then you might need to go out and collect the data yourself. For example, through web scraping or using data APIs from a third party. Then you combine the data and engineer some useful features, store them in a data set that you use for model training. This is also where your knowledge of databases and feature engineering comes in. There are many different types of databases based on the data structures, for example, relational or non-relational data and how the data is stored in the database. When it comes to relational databases, the most known language is SQL or structured query language because SQL is a query language used by many popular relational database systems, including MySQL, PostgreSQL, and Microsoft SQL Server. For web scraping and APIs, there are many Python packages that you can use. I've also covered some of them on my other videos over here. Then the next step in the pipeline is to use this dataset to build a proof of concept. That is the machine learning model that predicts the customer risk. This process will involve exploratory data analysis and coding skill to wrangle the data. You might also need to go back and forth to the previous step to engineer some extra features. Then you use your machine learning and deep learning skills and some math and statistics knowledge to select the right features and the algorithm, train the final model, test and evaluate the outcome of the model. Oh, and by the way, it's also not likely that you work on this project alone. So you need to use Git to version control your code and collaborate with others. The fourth step is to build an application and deploy the model to the real world. This is where the software engineering part comes in. If you work for a large company like a bank or an insurance company, it's not likely that you have to build a whole web application or deploy the application from scratch as a standalone thing. But rather, the final model would be integrated into the existing system within your organization. However, if you have to build and deploy the application from scratch yourself, it's useful to have some software development skills. For example, you know how to code a web app and use a cloud platform to deploy your application. That sounds a bit difficult, but luckily, if you're using Python for your project, we have many available libraries that make it super easy to create a web app. You might already know Python libraries like Django, Dash, Streamlit, and Panel. On the other hand, if you're using JavaScript, which is often the case when you're building a high-scale application that has to respond very fast to user interaction on the front end, like an e-commerce website, then Node.js on the back end with React.js on the front end, for example, is one of the popular frameworks for this purpose. Then you might want to package your application with all the dependencies in a self-sufficient portable container and that's why we might want to use Docker container to make it easier to deploy your app. Then finally, you can deploy your app on a cloud platform such as Azure, Heroku, or Google Cloud Platform. This may sound a lot if you're new to all this, and we'll definitely cover the deployment part in another video, so be sure to subscribe. However, the good news is that there is a more beginner-friendly option, that is to use an online data science platform to create and publish a project. Think of platforms such as Google, Google Colab, DeepNote, or Data Law. And talking about Data Law from JetBrains, who is sponsoring this video today, it is a collaborative data science platform that helps data science and business teams collaborate and share insights. You can actually perform a complete data science pipeline here on Data Law, from querying data, EDA, model prototyping, model training, to presenting results to stakeholders as reports or even creating data apps. In addition to that, you can collaborate in real time on the goat with your friends and colleagues. A unique feature of data law compared to other online platforms is that in some cases, when you can't use cloud tools to work with data, your team can host a private version of data law enterprise on AWS, Google Cloud Platform, or Azure, and 
also on premises. This ensures that the data doesn't leave the company's environment. For personal projects with non-sensitive data, you can use data law online with the community or professional plan. You can check out my gift code in the description below for a free month of professional plan. With this plan, you get access to GPU and also 20 gigabytes of storage for your project, which is a very solid deal. Going back to our risk classification use case, the final step is to monitor the model performance and communicate insights. Again, you also need to use some of your business knowledge to generate and communicate insights. For example, in this case, how the different levels of risk appetite might impact the model performance. If the threshold is too low, we get way too many false positives, while if it's too high, we get too many false negatives. When talking to stakeholders though, you might want to avoid those technical terms. They are only used between you and me. And instead, you might want to explain this as how many missed cases and how many false alarms the model will generate given a certain risk threshold. Okay, now that we know roughly what we need to learn and why we need to learn them, let's talk about the learning roadmap. There are generally two approaches to learning. The first approach is the breadth first approach, like going top down on letter T. You first learn a little bit of everything before you go deeper into one or two topics. The second approach is a depth first approach, meaning going bottom up. You first learn in depth and master one thing and expand your skill set later. Which approach applies to you depends on your situation. If you've already had experience in a few different roles in data science, you might already have a diverse skill set, but not too deep into anything, then the first approach is probably the more logical one. However, you might already be an expert in some specific tool and you know it very well, so working your way up and expanding your skill is a must. To help you organize your learning, I have prepared a nice detailed roadmap here on data law to show you exactly what and how to learn each of these topics. And this is assuming that you're starting from scratch. We are trying to cover the horizontal part of the T as quickly as possible, so you can go more in depth and maybe specialize in one thing later. Now, let me walk you through this roadmap. So my recommendation is to first learn some basic programming with Python, R, and SQL. SQL is probably the most beginner-friendly programming language because it uses a lot of natural words in it. So you might want to start learning how to query the data from a SQL database and how to manipulate and transform the data. Here you can find some learning resources and examples on this page. On data law, you have a dynamic notebook to practice, so it's quite handy. Next, it's time to learn some more advanced data wrangling and EDA. Here is where Python and R comes in. Now on this tab, you can find some learning resources and books for different levels of Python and R. You can start with either Python or R. I start with R earlier in my career and I love it, but I think Python nowadays is a bit more popular and more beginner friendly. So the key thing here is to learn the basics of the language and keep on practicing the, on the actual data sets to get the hang of it. The next step is to learn some data visualization and you can create many beautiful data visualization and even interactive dashboards in Python and R just like one of the examples here on my channel. In industry, many companies actually use proprietary BI software such as Power BI and Tableau to create dashboards. So I've also included some learning resources here for these tools. After having nailed some important basics, now it's the time to turn to some underlying topics such as math, probability, and statistics. This gives you the foundation you need to learn machine learning and deep learning. I've also made a few videos on my channel on how to learn math and statistics for data science, so feel free to check them out before you dive in. All the resources I mentioned in those videos are included in this tab. Now, for learning machine learning, there are tons of resources online, but I've embedded here the essential resources and tips for deep learning, which includes computer vision and NLP and reinforcement learning. It's actually optional if you want to learn those topics. It totally depends on your interests and the type of projects you're working on and the data you you're working with. For example, in my job, I work in the tax department. So we have quite some NLP projects because we often work with a lot of text data, but computer vision projects are very hard to come by. For the rest of the skills, I think the best way to learn is to actually get your hands dirty and build an end-to-end -end project. Through doing this, you can practice using data APIs, writing productionalized code, using Git version control for your project, organizing your project, and learn how to deploy your model on the cloud. For an end-to-end -end project, I'd encourage you to not download data from K2 
Chicago, but to actually collect the data by yourself. For example, through web scraping or through data APIs. Or you can also try to combine different data sets in a clever way. For example, if you have a geospatial data set and you have another one is the text data set with some location data, then you can combine those two data sets to make an interesting data science use case. I have a few examples on my channel about how I use data APIs and web scraping to collect the data. Also, don't forget to take inspiration from articles and from online tutorials that you can find and use them as a starting point for your project. And the best tip, I think, is to learn to read documentation and also use Stack Overflow or maybe give ChatGPT a try. Overall, this is a very rough roadmap and it's obviously not possible to list out and learn all the available tools out there. Also, the exact tools that you use in your job might differ very widely from one job to another, from company to company. So don't sweat too much about the exact tools, exact libraries or cloud platforms that you need to learn, but rather you want to learn the basic first and learn one of the tools and then you can transfer the skill to another tool very easily later on. Again, you can find this roadmap in the description below. If you want to contribute and collaborate with me on building this roadmap, please send me a private email to become an editor. I believe that learning takes dedication, patience and time. And most importantly, don't lose sight of your purposes and know that you are not alone. If you're curious about how I self-study anything as a data scientist, feel free to check out this video on my channel. In the upcoming video, I'm collaborating with Peter Akis, a productivity YouTuber, to talk about how to build a goal-setting system for learning and how to stay on track. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about it. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.